This is not relevant to the eigenvalue equation, but it's relevant to one of the names that will come up in this discussion. So as you know, and, and agree with me, <laughs> the Earth goes around the Sun. Yes? Everybody believes that? <clears throat> Did the Greeks believe that? No, the Greeks thought that the Earth was at the center of the universe and that, you know, there were some things that were planets that really moved around the night sky and then there were things that were stationary, they called them the stars, and they, they were like all out there and they didn't move. Or actually they moved as a rigid body. Their relative positions always stayed the same. So Greeks, the ancient Greeks, which represent the pinnacle of intellectual achievement, I, they, we might know more than the Greeks, I know Jesse might disagree, but if I had to uh, draw a graph of, uh, for lack of a better word, just how intellectually powerful human beings were, the maximum probably occurs in the ancient Greece. And then there was another little spark, you know, at the beginning of the 15th century with Descartes, uh, I should mention some other names also, Newton, Euler, Gauss, and then it dipped right back down. But, <laughs> uh, and we're at a local minimum right now. But so the Greeks, uh, who were amazing geometers, had unmatched imagination, of course considered the possibility that the Earth moved around the Sun. They were not as egocentric as some of the uh, following generations. Of course they considered the possibility that the Earth moved around the Sun. And they said, if the sun, let me go here, if the sun is right here and the earth is here and it's going around the sun the, and the stars are out here, then we should observe what's called stellar parallax. I don't know what the Greeks called it. The stellar pa parallax is this effect where right now Jesse is on the left side of the camera as far as I'm concerned and when I moved over here he's on the right side of the camera so the, their relative configuration to relative to me has changed and if the earth is moving around the sun then we should see a ch changes in the relative positions of the stars because for example from this point of view well I don't know where to look but maybe between these two stars right now this one appears to the right of this one and by the time we swing over here, it will appear to the left of this one. And even not talking so dramatic of a change, going from being on the right, being on the left, just a slight change in relative position. Right? That's what the Greeks realized must happen if the sun is stationary with all the other stars and the earth moves around the sun. And did they observe the stellar parallax? No, they did not. They didn't have accurate enough instruments, i.e. the naked eye, to observe any relative change in the position of the sun. And so then the Dark Ages came, and then Copernicus, I'm not sure when Copernicus was born, probably late 1400s, proposed his heliocentric model of the sun, didn't really propose it for the first time ever. Civilizations before him, the ancient Greeks, <clears throat> considered that possibility as well and rejected it on profoundly scientific grounds. So then there was Copernicus who did his calculations and was very, very confident that in fact the earth moves around the sun. But did he see the parallax? Did, was he, did he observe the stellar parallax? My basic question to you is, when was the stellar parallax first observed? One of the first telescopes, that's not a bad guess. So this is ancient Greeks, we're saying no, then Dark Ages, nothing. Then Copernicus, let's go 1500s, that's Copernicus. Within the 1500s, we had Galileo with his first telescope, observed the moons of Jupiter, am I right? So that added to the confidence that not everything goes around the Earth, because those guys were going around Jupiter. Okay, so that's 1600s. Then Kepler was right around here. Then Newton was born. Gravitation, theory of gravitation, the whole theory represents zero doubt 
that the Earth, in fact, goes around the Sun. So that's Newton. Uh, he died in 1727. Uh, then Euler dominated 18th century. Then came Laplace, probably right around here, died right around here, wrote a treatise on, on stellar, on the universe and the motion of the bodies and explained most of the puzzling phenomena knowing to men. Here's 1900s. Okay, here's us. Right, so from, I would say, here on out, there is no doubt, whatever that means, there's no such thing as science and no doubt. But let's say all the dominant models were, were heliocentric, where the sun is at the center and all the planets orbit the sun. So when was the stellar parallax discovered? Galileo century. Let's take a vote. Galileo century and the telescope. Jesse, you said telescope, so you have to raise your hand. Sure. Okay. Okay. Newton century. Kepler and Newton century. Wait, you guys are all going to pass? Nobody is allowed to pass. Everybody has to vote. Yes? So one vote here, you guys are not politically active. Where's, where's the grassroots movement? Okay, Euler's century. One, two, okay, three. What do the rest of you guys think? Have we discovered, do we know, the, have we seen the parallax? You've seen it? Yes. How did you see it? Literally right over there, like using Jackson's telescope. Okay. Straight up with that. Straight up, okay. What do you guys think? 1800. 1800s. Okay. So, my ploy has failed because my guess would have been earlier rather than later. Okay, but it was 1848. Can you believe that? <laughs> what you knew was a ploy. Okay, so I'll work on my delivery. 1848, and it's a, is associated with the name of Bessel. Bessel, and we're about to encounter Bessel functions. So that's why I, I thought we'd talk about that. I was shocked when I found out this date, 1848. So neither Galileo, nor Newton, nor Euler, nor Laplace. Yeah. It's lack of equipment and also just how far the stars are. So the reason why it's hard to detect is just how far the stars are. So the Greeks, to the degree possible, calculated how far the stars would need to be in order to, uh, f to not be able to observe stellar parallax. And it was what, 40 light years away or more, 400 light years away? And so it seemed likely, rather than to be able to comprehend distances like that, it was much more likely that the Earth was staying put and everything else rotated around it. It was just much a less contradictory paradigm, and so a better theory. 